Welcome back. You are watching The Morning Drift. My name is Simba Lajah Charles Kiyage. Let's get down into a big conversation this morning. It is uh, Wednesday, and so that means that we have to talk about art. Somebody just joked that uh, my art, my tie is not artistic today. The lapel keeps on pushing it to the side. Never had it here. I'll make it as we go by. Thank you very much. Anyway, today we want to understand art. And um, every time we talk about drawings, paintings, and artists, people have to say that understanding art is quite difficult and that true so, that even experts themselves might not understand art in its entirety. You watched us last week, we had artists here who said they draw their inspiration from the abyss of darkness, that they see things the minds are trying to communicate and that's exactly what they bring out. So it was a fantastic conversation that uh, I had on um, Wednesday last week. So today, again, we do have an, another artist on um, the set with us today. We're gonna learn about our art, what inspires her and what art means. And every time I have conversations with the artists, it, it, it tends to be a self-discovery journey for myself as well. Because the way to see things and do things is quite different from the way we human beings in the normal conduit see it. All right, today, I want to introduce to the conversation or to our set right here on the morning drapes, what really came right there when Jiku or as an artist. I keep on saying that. Um, I keep on referring to mm -hmm. the name you like to be called for the entire of this interview. Is it Waridi? I love Waridi. Yes. You Waridi can call translating Waridi. to Rose in uh, English. Rose yes. In English. I was looking for that one. Yes. Translates to Rose in English. Waridi, yes. how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. Welcome to the Morning Drift. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I've been looking forward to having this conversation, by the way, from last week mm -hmm. to date. So mm -hmm. I'm very happy to have you around. Thank you, thank you. Here we are. I'm going to ask a very awkward question. Yes, please. And the way you're going to respond mm -hmm. is going to be the starter for this conversation. Okay. Who's an artist? Mm -hmm. So an artist really is a person who is looking to change the world in the way that they do their things. And I like that the common misconception is that an artist is maybe a person who just draws or paints, but really all of us are artists. There are those who um, use fine art, such as me, to express ourselves. There's people who use their words. We have poets, we have musicians. Then we also have people in the media space who use films, um, short films, movies and stuff to communicate. So really an artist is a person who is looking to change the world in the way that they express themselves. As am. Yes. Another question that I find a bit um, interesting when I'm talking to artists mm -hmm. is this. Do um, you want to express yourself through painting, mm -hmm. a drawing? Mm -hmm. let, let, let's dial it back a bit. Mm -hmm. So to you, art is not essentially a visual expression, is it? That, yes. I've drawn a car, guys. I've, I've drawn a human being. I've uh, drawn some land. I so, have a sculpt. I've I, sculpted that's something. It, that's it. That, yeah. That's it. Done. Uh -huh. So um, if I can give you a backstory, yeah. um, up until the 18th century, art was a really wide, um, it was a wide word. So anything that the human beings put out was considered art of whatever capacity. It was really just human skill, what you could do with your hands. Everything in that capacity was uh, considered art. But then uh, the broadness of it uh, tended to set some people off. So as time went by, it went being narrowed and narrowed into what we now have as fine art and things uh, in the creative space, yeah, such as films and music and stuff. But then it hasn't moved away from everything that probably somebody would do considers that art. Mm -hmm. Because indeed, when I'm speaking, I keep on referring to the first deep conversation that even this one is getting deeper. Mm -hmm. that I've ever had with an artist last week, they said, well, you see, if I express Nairobi mm -hmm. through 
a proper painting, like mm -hmm. you go to a street, probably Moy Avenue or, mm -hmm. or Kimadi Street or whatever street it is, then right. maybe on a Friday evening, right. then I capture that in my mind mm -hmm. and then I can put it down to a painting, mm -hmm. it essentially stops being a street mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Yes. It becomes a representation of something alive, a culture in Nairobi. Is that what it is? It is, it is. The beauty of art, um, of anything art, is that it should be able to raise questions and then it should leave room for interpretation. As in? Yeah, because the same way, and we look at the same things, but we don't all see them the same. We never. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's the it question mm -hmm. in every artist. Right. And I, right. I, I, I want to listen to your story. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not common that somebody decides, well, well I want to be an artist. Right. There are artists that have something they're struggling with. Could right. be good, could be bad. Yes. So, so really, what yeah. are you struggling with that you're trying to express with your art? Thank you. Um, I'd say for me as a fine artist and for many fine artists, we have this strong conviction in us. It's just... As an artist, you are born to create in whatever space you are. You are creating something, whether it's a, it's a piece of art that people can look at, whether you're creating someone to become something better, you're always creating something. And so for me, um, I have this great conviction to change the world with my art, for the positive that is. Because um, art, as wide as it is, it can also be used in a negative way. But for me personally, I'd love to change the world positively with my art. The best way to understand an artist mm -hmm. is to truly know them. Mm -hmm. If essentially I'm going to pick your art somewhere, right. that I really have to know who it is. Right. In fact, you gotta learn a personality mm -hmm. so that you start to identify with that particular art, the attributes in the art. We yeah. say, well, see, what it is trying to, when, when, she, when she does it like A, B, C, D, and we're gonna get into that, mm -hmm. it, it essentially means this, this, and this. Right. Is it difficult mm -hmm. to understand art if you really do not understand the creator? That is, it will be very hard for me to interpret your art right. if I do not know you. I, I, like I've got no clue of yes. who the artist is yes. and how they communicate themselves. Yes, 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 yes. Um, the beauty <clears throat> of me as an artist, I, I love my profession, I yeah. love my world. It's a beautiful one, I have to say. And so I get to visit galleries. I have friends who are artists and I get to see their work. And um, I have to tell you, even me, as much as I'm an artist, I will look at another artist's work and think, wow, what was going on through their mind when they created this piece? Uh, what did they draw from this? Like, what part of them did they tap into to produce such a work? And so, yeah, I always try to remember, you can only put out who you are inside. So it helps to know the artist and in that way you can get to understand their artwork better as much as there's lots of room for interpretation. Um, there's this one painting I saw on the internet recently. Mm. It's of a person, they were, it looks like they're rowing a boat in a, in a vast ocean. And then there's something in, a, in the distance that looks like a portal that leads into another world. So as I looked at that painting, I couldn't help but think, I wonder what's going on here. Is it really a portal to another world? Is it a, a, a really just a small, um, a, like a way to see heaven? Mm -hmm. Is it psychoactive drugs? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 like what's going on over there, here? There's a lot of interpretation, isn't Yes, it? there's which, a lot that Which would can... help for you to know the artist and then mm -hmm. say, well, but you see, if I know an artist and I could actually try and attribute their story right. to all their life to whatever it is they're trying to paint, isn't it? Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. good. So let's come to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just gonna help people learn to you before we get into the, uh, the basics of art then. Right. Do you see, do you struggle mm -hmm. to live a normal life? Like to have a normal day as an art, in the sense of, do you see life differently? Do you struggle? Whereas every time, whatever it is you're saying, your mind is telling you, this could mean this, you, you gotta do this. Yeah. And I like to ask this question like this. Mm -hmm. Have your friends ever told you, Baridi, we are here, let's be here. Can you count <laughs> on that wall that you are? Right, yeah. yeah, that happens a lot, that happens. Um, when 
I let me say let me speak for myself. Yeah. I I tend to see things for what they can be, and a lot of times I draw inspiration from what's around me. And just like you've mentioned, sometimes I tend to go aloof. I I tend to maybe be drawing um, an inspiration or thinking of the next thing that could inspire my next painting. And so the world inside my head is much more beautiful, I'd say, than the world outside. And that. Sometimes it's a conflict, right? It's, I'm trying to be here, but I'm thinking in my head it's so much better. Is there, is there a time that your mind gets out of, or, or of art and, and, and sees things for just what they are? Hardly ever. <laughs> <laughs> Hardly ever. Yeah. Hardly ever, yes, yes, yes. Um, I try to see things in, <clears throat> in their best light, in what they could be in their best sense. Yeah. yeah. I'm just going to ask you this as well. Mm -hmm. the, um, the most famous artists that we do know of, mm -hmm. I, I just can't paint it, I just can't put a finger in their names. Mm -hmm. The point that some of them could be <clears throat> looked as being crazy to some sense. Mm -hmm. But for you to create pure art, that you got to dig to a place right. that you and I, normal guys, are just looking at art, just can't relate to. Right. So when we're talking about the, the famous artists of our time, mm -hmm. and even in history, some people would describe Da Vinci as being crazy mm -hmm. in some aspects. Mm -hmm. We've read stories of, about how some people will be put in sarcastic words mm -hmm. and that will create art that nobody would decipher other than just them. Yeah. But for you to be people mm -hmm. in your drawing, in your creation, right. you gotta tap to a place that is not here. Is, I'm, I'm right. trying to ask this question. <laughs> I, I, I see what you're saying. I can see where you, yeah. what you're driving at. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's true, it's true. Um, from ordinary, you get ordinary. Yeah. But for, if you really want to put out something extraordinary, you have to tap into the extraordinary parts of yourself. And uh, just like you said, sometimes being in isolation, especially for artists, it helps largely even for myself, and it's in those moments that you really, you get to see yourself really in your craziest form, in your happiest form, in your saddest form. And in all of these places you draw inspiration. And depending on what it is that really convicts you the most, that pushes you to put something out. And yeah, it's in its purest form then, in that particular situation. Do you, do you have normal sleeping hours in the sense of, do you, mm. do you just say, no, it's time to sleep? Or sometimes you find you have a regular sleeping patterns where mm -hmm. if you get that vision, you're like, if I don't put it down now, mm -hmm. it's, it's gone. Right. It's gone. I spoke to an artist here last right. weekend, mm -hmm. uh, last Wednesday, sorry, who said, see, the thing is, I've not slept. So last night I kept on getting these images and images and I, I could clearly see them. And then I would do one, go back and right. go like, I've seen another, I just got to go and do it. Yeah. In the abstract sense, that yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. So let me tell you, especially as an artist living with regular people, like people yeah. who work yeah. regular jobs, <laughs> you are a bit crazy, like right <laughs> off the bat, you're yeah. just, you're not the usual. Yeah. And sometimes you can be at loggerheads with people because sometimes you do get those inspirations at two in the morning. And when mom hears you, your lights are on at two, so what, what, what is she doing? doing uh, I don't, you know, you yeah. know, it's a bit, but um, it helps to always have a sketch pad or somewhere you can jot your ideas down just so you don't forget them because sometimes they do flit. And in that moment when you get them, they're really strong. It's like a really strong feeling. Awesome. Yeah, that mm -hmm. you have to put it out there. Awesome. Yeah. Um, let me tell you a, a short story. The other day I was, I was finishing up this painting. It was late at night and then my nanny was in the kitchen. And I told her, hey, Monica, I've, I've finished this painting. Now let me explain it to you. Mm. So, and I was explaining it to her. I could see the, the confusion in her face. And she was like, wow, to each really their own, because I would never have guessed this is what the, the painting meant. This is what it interpreted. And uh, that you're doing it this late at night. I was like, yes, I really had it in me to finish it at this hour of the night. And so yes, we, we're not regular. Let me see. We're that, not that, that it's not, not going to be regular, isn't it's, it? Because, it's not. It's not. Because your, your, your creation is in the mind. 
And if you're going yes. to create something that is specifically different from the other, right. it, can, it just can't be termed as regular, isn't it? Yes. Good. So now, for the sake of the audience now, which has got a lot of personal questions, I'm, I'm going to keep on asking them. Right. When you identify as a finer art, mm -hmm. artist, mm -hmm. what does that mean to any other person trying to understand art? Okay, so um, a fine artist really is the person who puts out their work in... Uh, in the, uh, in the form of drawings yeah. or paintings, yeah. essentially that's fine art. Uh, and then you have your sculptors, um, you have your, um, let me say musicians, yeah, people in that yeah, kind yeah, of space, yeah, yeah. that also is fine art. Um, but then art is in a much broader sense really, really, really extensive, yeah. really, really extensive. Architects can be um, considered artists, engineers can be considered artists, but then what they do that for them is not fine art. Fine art really is much more in a sense of something that you can, uh, you can observe visually and uh, you can consume audibly. That is it. Yes. Pretty much. Right. All right. Another question that we kept on getting mm. is that I'm going to talk about exactly where we are in this country as an art and, and, and the specific industry as well. Right. Can't somebody learn art? Could I, could I decide today? Mm -hmm. Already, I know you're in the industry and say, whoa. Right. Get, get me a pencil. I want to start drawing. Get me, <laughs> get me some paints, guys. Just teach me how to do these things. I want to start. Yes. Is it, is it something that you can learn? Or there yes. has to be... Or there has to be... Is it, is it talent <laughs> or you know people also describe talent differently right. that you can learn talent uh -huh. is it is it is it talent is it inborn or you just have to you or you can learn it um i love that question yeah for the record i i like to think that i was born an artist that it's talent every artist always has right. that thing i'm, I'm saying if you're going right. to be good that has to be somewhere mm. is that no, no you're not the one who thinks like that <laughs> for you to be actually in this place where you're saying things in an abstract sense, mm -hmm. that you're attaching meanings to the things that you're saying, that's called be deep. That, mm -hmm. That's not something that I'm going to sit and learn. <laughs> right. Uh, but to answer okay. the question, right. art is a very, very, very teachable skill. Anyone can learn art. I know people who started off with stick figures, and their art right now is on a level that me, born naturally, um, I, I can't say I've gotten there yet. So it is a very teachable skill, just like any other skill, really. If you put your mind to something, I believe you can achieve it and you can be the best at it. So yes, it is teachable. Uh, it takes practice, takes patience, but eventually with a determined heart, you'll get there. No, Zen. Yes. But th this is an art that, that we're seeing a lot of, um, a lot of people now have been exposed to. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's a, it's a bit easier to understand. Right. Pen pencil art. Uh -huh. Is it? It's relatable. Right. Could, could, you, could you tell me why? Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about your painting shortly as well. Right. But could, could you tell me why it's easier mm -hmm. for majority of audiences to relate to pencil art, mm -hmm. but when it comes to now the painting, painting we're using just paint and then it's chalks and brushes, mm -hmm. it gets a bit harder for someone to understand exactly mm -hmm. what the artist was trying to communicate. Right. Yeah. Um, I'd compare this to um, a child, yep. and it's easy, like a newborn baby, it's easy for them to digest milk easy. It's, it's in the... Um, let me see, it's in the genes to, yeah, 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 to, um, yeah, yeah. to absorb the... To absorb, they understand yeah, milk. Yeah. But yeah. as they grow, they are introduced to hard food slowly, 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 until you're grown up and you can chew steak at a party. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. So pencil art is much more relatable because it's easy. It's easier to understand. It's really, it's really simple. It's, it's the milk for the average person, let me see, that's let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pencil art. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's a portrait, a landscape, cityscape, whatever it is, pencil art is easy to interpret. Abstract art, on the other sense, is um, much more representational. I have to explain to you what I meant in this drawing for you to, to see it as I see it, because um, you could be getting a very, very, very different understanding from the same thing. But if I did a portrait of you in pencil, or I drew these flowers in pencil, yeah. it doesn't take a genius to understand, oh yeah, she was drawing. That? Yeah, Mr. Simba, yeah. she was drawing flowers. That? Such, such stuff. Pretty much. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Right. I'm going to carry this painting that we have right here. Okay. And 
We have three minutes to go on break, and I'm going to come back as we talk about it. Right. So the interpretation is where the art then begins. Yes. I'm going to carry it, and you can tell me whether I'm carrying it. Is it? It's upside down. It's upside down. Yes. Wow. I couldn't even know. <laughs> Guys, this, this one is upside down. So I've got to have it like this. Yes. There we go. Yes. Already, it is an abstract painting. It is an abstract painting. If you, if you give me a million hours, mm -hmm. I don't know how many years those are, mm -hmm. to explain to you what this is, right. I will never start. I will never clear. Uh -huh. Could could you kindly dig into your mind when you're creating this mm -hmm. and tell us exactly what it is that you were trying to come up with here? Okay, okay. I would I would want to see how you'd interpret it first, uh, to see how close or far you are let me, to let the... Let me turn it. Let me it, turn just it. Take a, take a quick second. I see, wow, I see a lot of red and blue and black and, and plants and... Mm -hmm. You know what? Just mm. for, for this is this is knowledge from two interviews. The, you're the second one. Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to dig into the mind of artists and see how they look. Now that right. I've known you, you're trying to create the world better. Mm -hmm. That there's a that, that, that there's a lot of there's a lot of blood mm -hmm. that probably people have lost. Uh -huh. Right. Right. And out of the blood that. Humanity has lost probably out of wars, out of diseases, out of all that. Mm -hmm. There's still something good that come out of it. That's why I'm, I'm seeing water, blue representation wow. of water. I'm seeing the, that even, they, they go with, here's it, the flowers. <laughs> yes. So I'm seeing different colors up here. Right. That representation of something that can come good out of all the blood that we've lost. But then the blue represents we've got to wash all these things and try and change humanity. The, the, you know that I will start from there because then I've, I've kind of known your story a little uh -huh. bit. Like, well, how do you interpret art? You're trying to use art to make the world better. Yes. And this probably is what made communicate what you're trying to do. You see, mm -hmm. the good thing about talking to the artist. Right. Don't, don't give me marks. <laughs> I'll, 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 mark, I'll mark it myself <laughs> after, after you give me what interpretation this is. Right. All right, so okay. here we go. I love it. You, you're not so far from the... From what I was going for. Yes, guys, I told you I'm becoming a guru at this. Anyway. Um. Right. Um, but uh, the title of this painting is called uh, The Road Less Taken. So the red that you see is mm -hmm. um, a wide road. Okay. And the red represents the passions and the things that we love okay. as people. And so as you can see, the road is paved with colors of gold, silver, and bronze. And these things that we really, really, really are passionate about, you know, they have these promising things along with them. But then the thing is, with this wide road that many of us travel, on the, on the, up, on the flip side is darkness, confusion, and things that we might not necessarily know that lie on the, on the other side. But we are encouraged to take the, the road less taken. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's paved with the color black, I which see, means that yeah. it's not going to be easy yeah. to, to be walking that, that narrow path, which is represented by the color blue. And then as you can see, um, on the flip side of this narrow path is the colorful side. So if we could just persevere this really really taken road on the other side Thank is all these beautiful colorful yeah. things yeah. Um, that we also cannot necessarily inter um, understand but if we if we if we persevere the promise lies on the other side and so the purple dots um that you see on the red on the red path and a few on the on the blue path are they represent people because we are royalties in god's eye that's the color purple and you can see that there's many of the of the people on the wide road and very few on the narrow road. So you, there you have it. That's that's the interpretation of the painting. So take the road less taken. So take the road less taken. That's that's the message right there, guys. I, we're just starting. Take a tiny breather right here on the morning drift. Once we come back, then deeper into our art trying to understand exactly how she communicates through her paint and, and brushes and talk to her about where we are as an industry in the country when it comes to this particular one. You're watching Morning Drift. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiage. Join us online at Look Up TV across all your social media platforms once we come back for more art.
What's going on? You're gonna have to get Musa. Adam, Adam, Adam. You're gonna have to go and get Nani? Lazima tujue kwa jambo linalofuatia kwetu ni ndoa. Mimi? Ndoa hii. Doris, unaongea nini? Pia, vile hii kazi ilivyo muhimu kwa wewe, hata mimi halikadhalika ni muhimu. Sitoshi. Kuna mtu hivi sasa anatafuta atakula nini ndio? Mama nimesoma mama, nimeitii mama. Na vitu vyote. Kwa nini nishi mashaka kweli? Wewe si family hapa. Kuzaa si kama kwenda haja. Baba <laughs> Utachagua sura au tabia unapotaka kumchumbia mwanamke. Anaweza kuwa mrembo lakini hana tabia. Naweza jifanya ndio hata kama hapa sitapata. Nipate kwa kwa tabia. Ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba wanaume wengi hata wale ambao wanatutazama wakati huu ni sura inawavutia mara ya kwanza. Ukiona mwanaume anasema, "Eh hey, ule dem ako poa, eh hey, ule dem." Hmm. Hafikiri future na huyo dem. Huyo mwenye ako poa anapendeza, anakaa vizuri na kitu cha kutulisha. Wajue za kuwa na tabia nzuri, lakini ikabadilishwa na hali. Kanisani wanjia ndugu yangu wa mpakwa haya wakishuka wakipanga masika. Na hao wa ndugu wa wajua wa wachukui. Lazima nikae na wewe kwa muda fulani. Nikusome ni kujue kindani sana kuna uchunguzi aina mbili ndugu yangu na uchunguzi wa polisi na wa CID kama kuna mtu ambaye ana ujuzi wa hali ya juu ya kujifanya ni na kukusoma akili yako mm -hmm. na kukufanya wewe uamini kile unachotaka no. kutoka kwake mm. ni mwanamke Interpretation is up to you, but then you have to learn the artist to understand what they're trying to do with their art for you to find these true meanings to the paintings and their work once you run into them. Now we have an artist called Waridi. The interpretation of that is rose in English. And rose is for creating moments, beautiful moments, making life better, you know? and her art essentially enshrines that particular definition. And we do have her with, her, we do have, we do have her with us on set here today. Already, let, let's continue with this conversation. And I'd like to drift a little bit and, and talk about where we are as a country right. as pertains art. Right. For my South Africa telling me this is a big business. Uh, but the galleries all over it. This is a thing that has now been enshrined in the culture. It's, right. it's, it's huge. But then I might be wrong. Mm -hmm. I've only been to one gallery mm -hmm. in Nairobi. Maybe I'm not attuned mm -hmm. to where these events are, mm -hmm. but I've been, one, I've been to one at Lyon's front Nice, nice. Got there, so amazing art. Nice place to yeah? start, yeah. N nice place to start. Yeah. I'm just at the beginning, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> anyway, it's a nice do, you, place do you think start. that now we as a country mm -hmm. have fully embraced this industry? Um, I love it. Let me tell you, essentially, yeah. as a Kenyan and as a Nairobian, I feel like you'd really have to be in denial to not like art. Art is everywhere around us. To begin with, with the with the Matatu culture that makes us stand out in the world, really. Um, you have art all over it. And as the years have gone by, especially more recently, you can notice in the central business district, there's much more murals going on. There's graffiti in places, you know, the city market and all these areas, <laughs> there's so much art going on. And um, we are visual creatures, we really are. What you see, you tend to believe. And so art, um, in Kenya at the moment is good. People keep saying, oh, you know, people won't buy um, um, African art, Kenyan artists. Really, you haven't put yourself out there because there's people who appreciate and love art. And um, 
I feel like in the years to come, art will be a big business. So yeah. if you start early, the fortunes belong to you. Ah, is that right? Yes. So creating your story a bit early. Yeah. Is that right? What do you envision mm -hmm. yourself? Mm -hmm. And I know, I know, but I would say you're not many as well. Right. The, the, the good artists in this country, the ones who stand out, mm -hmm. you guys are not many. Mm -hmm. It's when the story for the Kenyan art mm -hmm. is getting created, and it's like the guys who are so so deep into it. Right. How far do you think we are? I know you've been to a couple of galleries and, and you've seen how international galleries are done mm -hmm. and then are conducted where, you know, people never understand. Like, a painting worth to 20 million US dollars. Even the, there's some that are valueless, the likes of Mona Lisa, no, nobody can buy it now. Bye. It's like, guys, you, you can't put a value on it. Mm -hmm. How far are we from making this industry mainstream? the way the other forms of art in this country have grown, mm -hmm. but case in point, music and poetry. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we are very much in the early stages, let me say. I have artists that I look up to in this country of ours. There's Patrick Mukabi, mm -hmm. Michael yeah. Soe, yeah. um, Chela Chelangat, the one who's done Cookie to Restaurant. Yeah. You know, yeah. you see I, the, I know, yeah, 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 the vibrant I, just, I love it. She's an inspiration. Yes, and I, yeah, every time I go to Cookie I'm like, right. who's this guy? Yeah, yeah because that it's such an inspiration. I know, yeah, isn't I know. It? Yeah. yeah, and in the 21st century, she really inspires a lot of us women. And I have to say that we really are, we're young. We're very young in this art industry, I have to say. Um, before we get to the point where we really embrace our own and our people really are willing to buy your art at the price tag that it's going for, first of all, you have to understand that for the price tag, this is the value that I'm giving you. I could, I could easily sell you a 2,000 more painting as I could a 20 million shilling painting, but it's the, the value that I've put on it, how much work, um, quality and skill that I have put into that piece. And before we get to appreciate that, we, I feel like we have to appreciate ourselves as a people. As yes. I am. Yes. <clears throat> and I'll, I'll go back to um, the, the question that I asked you earlier on, on exactly how the other forms of art have mm -hmm. gone. Case in point, music. All right. And I, I don't know what your genre is, but mm -hmm. I'm just going to try and mention the, the, the artists who are actually trying to do big things in this mm -hmm. particular one. Mm -hmm. Right now, if, if, I, if I give you the story of Saudi Soul, mm -hmm. Saudi Soul have already created a story mm -hmm. that if I know they're going to release a song, it's going to be around A, B, C, D. So it's, right. it's either like right. it or not, or right. then I try to sit back and interpret what their lines mean. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Nyashinsky, I know is deep into his rap, and his rhyme is so deep that mm -hmm. you have to actually read within the lines and listen within the lines mm -hmm. for you to know you exactly, it. that's it, <laughs> for you to know exactly what he's communicating about, right. for you to fully enjoy it. Yes. What, what do you think is going to be the conduit for majority of artists like yourself then mm -hmm. to start telling your story so that every other time I'm somewhere in a Ruby CBD and mm. I, I see a certain painting, I'll be like, yo, that is Waridi. Yeah. I know because of A, B, C, D. Right. Is that that conduit? It's, it's what has been heavily established mm -hmm. in other, um, I would say, performing economies, like the Western economies now. It's, it's, it's huge that it's not a big problem for artists like yourself to tell their story mm -hmm. and to identify with them. Right. Is, is it a conduit that we're missing? Um, I, I'd say essentially for, for that to come to pass, yeah. it, has, it has a lot to do with the artist and it, it's how you see yourself, how you identify yourself, who am I as a person, what am I trying to communicate? And I'd circle back to what I said that you can only put out who you are inside. So, if, so the thing that Saudi Soul puts out, it's who they are inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. What mm -hmm. Nyashinsky puts out is who he is in, uh, inside. And then what is he trying to communicate with that? What, um, what message is he pushing? What is he trying to achieve with his music? So essentially what we call it, we call it a niche as artists. Um, the cookie, let me use the cookie to yes. artist yeah. Chela, for example. Anywhere, she could do um, a mural somewhere in a cave and I'd know this is Chela, because that's who she's, 
she's drawn into the deepest parts of herself and she's, she's decided, I will identify this way. This is what will make me stand out in this industry. This is who I am. And this is the message that I'm trying to put out. Yes. So it's essentially you as an artist to dig deep in yourself. Um, find out who you are, what you're trying to convey out there, and make it a niche, you can. But also, there's people who are very, very diverse. Very diverse, you cannot box them. You cannot tell them, yes, this is what you're gonna put out, and this is and all this you is want all to you see. Want to put out. Yeah, yeah, from you. Yeah. So for those artists, I tell them, um, don't listen to the negative voices, because sometimes people <clears> will put you down as an artist, I have to tell you. Not everyone sees the vision as you see it. And so believe in yourself, be your own biggest champion. And yeah, it will work out. It will work out. What makes, well, I would ask you this, mm -hmm. what makes a painting or a work of art expensive? Mm -hmm. Like what adds value to mm -hmm. it? Like how do you value? But that's, that's the right question. How do you value a my, work of art? Yeah. Nazi. Okay, how do mm -hmm. I value my pieces? It's um, the transformation that I know this piece of art would be able to make in the next person's life. How much would I value that transformation, really? It's not how much money I bought my, my, my canvas for, my paintings for, my brushes for, it's the transformation. It's the, it's the change that's about to come into your life every time you see this piece. That's, that's how I value my art, personally. Do you paint faces? Uh -huh. And if you would ever paint a face, mm -hmm. really? Mm -hmm. Especially with you being an artist who's trying to make the world better. We've, we've, seen, we've seen famous paintings that have the mom and the kid and, and, and mm. you could read the expression of the faces of the kids and the mom. Mm. And people would interpret it differently. Mona Lisa is essentially a face yeah, painting. Yeah. And there have been a million and one interpretations. In fact, nobody knows exactly I what know. the artist behind this was trying to communicate. It's just association of meaning. Mm. Would you, Would if you, I, if you painted a face right. to represent Kenya today? Uh -huh. If I would paint a face to represent Kenya today, oh, it would be a beautiful face, I have to say. Oh. I love this country of mine. I feel like we've come um, a really long way. And um, so there was this song I was listening to this morning uh, it's by an artist called Chance the Rapper. Mm -hmm. And it, it's about the, it was essentially about Black Pride and how far black people have come. And in the music video, he features Kenya um, shortly, the Mau Mau Revolution, revolution yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so when I saw that, I, I had to remember these people who really had to suffer for us to enjoy what we have today. For me and you to, to be seated here, Simba, there's a time when this was unimaginable, um, that uh, we could have a platform such as this, discuss the matters that we're discussing today. And so I feel like Kenya right now as a country is a very, very beautiful country. I love the determination that's in this country, um, the drive, the innovation, the, the smartness, the genius that's all around us. I am largely inspired by people around me. Um, for, for the record, this is a bit off topic, but uh, people yeah. always ask me if I'd want to travel. And I'm like, no, I don't think the countries out there are as good as Kenya. I, I love it here. I love it. Yeah. So if I was to paint a face that represents Kenya, I'd, I'd really look for the most beautiful person I know. Yeah. And to represent that thing. Mm. And probably have them smile. Is that, yes. is that what it is? Yes, and have them smile. Yeah. Right. Let's move on to the next part then. If indeed I will know you as somebody who wants to make the world better, like your, your paintings and work of art are just gonna express hope, beauty, you know? Yeah. Are you saying that there's some colors in your painting that you would naturally not do? And I'm talking about the dark colors, which in, in, in the color psychology, and I mm. don't know what that's, whether that's what you yeah. guys call it in your yeah. industry, yeah. the color psychology then that represent messaging, the, the representing themes, the representing feelings. Mm -hmm. When this artist was trying to work, what colors are we predominantly going to associate with your work? 
guys, this is, this is important. So that once you run into those paintings by Waridi outside there, you'll be like, yo, Waridi, definitely. Isn't that? So, so uh, in your mind, what colors do you see every time when you want to represent hope, joy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, good things to come. Because I've seen some of them here. I've right. seen that vibrant. I've seen a lot of blue. I've seen a lot, you know, the, those ones that are easy to spot. Right. Yeah. Um, my relationship with color is a good one. I love every color under the yeah. sun. You yeah. can tell from my yeah, paintings. I yeah, yes, yeah. I do love color. Mm -hmm. And for, yes, in color psychology, every color represents something. You know that green represents life, red passion, uh, blue is calmness, yellow and orange vibrance, joy, happiness, and the likes. Um, purple royalty, I'd go on and on. Yeah, yeah, but the yeah. point is, uh, I love color and um, for me, as I could look at a painting, I could do a painting myself. And sometimes I feel like, oh my gosh, I feel like this color is overwhelming. The amount of color I've put into this piece is overwhelming, which is a feeling I had just last week. But uh, I know for me that each and every stroke, each and every color, tiny lots as it is, it represents something. So for me, I don't think there's a color that I'd set aside and be like, ah, oh, no, this one I don't. If it's time for it to be represented, if it's time for that color to put out a message for me, it's time for you to show up. So yes. Razem. Yeah. Let's talk about your growth, personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know you're on a journey, mm -hmm. and, and every other person says, I'm not there. Um, I'm growing, and right. the more you continue expressing yourself, right. the more your patterns become clear. And that's one way of knowing an artist. Yes, that, yes, yes. Like you say, like if you, you, you look at any coquito um, murals that are done, you would spot the artist and say, well, guys, it's yes, because of ABCD. Yes, yes. Right. <laughs> Have you grown with your patterns? Are there some patterns and strokes that mm -hmm. you would consistently then say, guys, I, I can't move away from this, mm -hmm. this, this but this is me. Right. What, what, what patterns are those that guys will pick out in your paintings? Oh, okay. Um, so far, um, I'd say I'm a young artist, still yeah. growing, but no. um, what I have picked from my, from my work so far is just, uh, it's, it's colorful. It's vibrant. It's gonna be colorful. It's gonna be vibrant. Yes. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. I I love that art. I love that color can really change a mood. I could walk, you know, I could walk into a dark room and then even if I was happy right before I entered that room, now my mood has changed. But I love the the whole uh, idea of color coming together just to create all this vibrance and to give you all these ideas in your head that you didn't even know you had. You can see um, colors coming together so beautifully and all the questions that you probably had in your, in your head get to be answered just by you putting all these pieces of a puzzle together to come together. So for me, mine would be just colorfulness and vibrance. Yes, that's, that's my... That's, that's your style. identity. That's my that's, identity. That's, that's you. Yes. That it's gonna be. It's gonna be. So just in summary, that right. that your your paintings or your work of art, mm -hmm. when somebody's gonna look at it, it's gonna have a lot of vibrant colors. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes, that's what I'm saying. And they got. They're, they're gonna be deep in that in, in that sense. Yes. Yes. In strokes chemistry, you, you're gonna t show somebody that. Mm -hmm. You find some people go very deep in it, some go faintly mm. on it. Why, why, why? How do you interpret that? It, mm. Does it show emotion when you're trying to understand the strokes on a particular painting or work of art? Why? Is that something that I would look and then say, uh, maybe we're really here, was trying to communicate about mm. the intensity of this issue. Mm. If the stroke is quite deep and heavy, yes. and if the color at some point is so deeper than the rest of the places on the canvas, I would say, well, guys, yeah. you see, yeah. this, this is exactly what she was gonna stress, stress here. Is that how you read a painting? Yes, yes, that is one way to interpret it. Yeah. Um, depends on what the artist is trying to achieve. And I like that you've mentioned that because in this painting of mine, you can see that the red area is a bit textured. It has not only optical texture, it yeah. has tangible. Yeah, yeah. actually so carried that, so that I can Look at it. Yes, mm -hmm. but I was yeah. trying to, yeah. Yeah, to achieve with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can yeah, see actually, it, you can yeah, touch it. Yeah, it's actually it. got the texture here. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's the intensity of the passions, of the things that we are passionate about. They're so strong to us. We feel them everywhere. 
it's it's everywhere in everything we do yeah. and so it's that's why i was trying to communicate that it might be a bit hard to walk out of this wide path given how much it draws us in and all the nice things that pave it um and so on the other side say yeah. on the side on the lower side which is supposed to represent the darkness and yeah. the confusion yeah. 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 and the upside where we have the the beauty and the peace and the love where we have the flowers um it's a bit flat because we really it's it's a thing that's more in our heads we just know that on the flip side it's probably bad but yeah. how bad is it you haven't experienced it and then come back and to just know how bad it is and we can only imagine it but right now what we where we are right now what we can see touch and feel it's very real for us as a yes pretty much i say already every time i speak to you again and we have five minutes uh, left for this conversation i'm oh, going to ask you this it's yeah. quite sad no oh, i didn't <laughs> want this to stop so uh. um i say i hear you explain about this art mm -hmm. and i keep on going to the relation to songs no song is ever bad by the way mm -hmm. that's that the reality is when you look at the chemistry of making songs and the psychology of making songs right. the song you hate most somebody's going to relate to it on a deeper sense yeah. it touches you right. your brain in different areas right. where you're like why do you like this song i don't like it some people love that song some people like vibrant songs and all that mm. <sighs> and songs communicate through bits mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's it so if it's a bit that I like, if it's a slower bit, a deeper bit, I love it. What do you think is going to pull more people to this form of art? Because it's a form of art mm -hmm. that I do not think the majority of us have been drawn to, right. to I understand. Yeah, what do you think is going to draw more? And uh, that's an industry question. Like, what, what, what do you think needs to be done um, with your industry so that now you can draw more people to these beats, to these textures here, to, the, to these messages here? Because this is an art that I do not think majority of people have been mm -hmm. open to. Like, yeah. you know, you can understand yeah. this painting. <laughs> yeah, and I have a meaning to it. Yeah. It's yeah. true. And for the record, uh, I've ever gifted someone a painting that I loved and it was close to my heart. <laughs> One of my favorite paintings. Yeah. But they didn't quite I see it. Yeah, yeah. So I could tell that they didn't appreciate it as much as I did, and that hurt me. That might have hurt me a bit. And um, I feel like the way to draw people into this kind of oh, for the let me just say this now that yeah, you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I made this painting, I didn't want to show it to anyone. I was just gonna keep it to myself, and no one was ever gonna see it. But like I told you, when I told my nanny about it, she was like. No, you can't, you can't not show people this painting. It has a really good meaning to it, and it would be a criminal offense to not <laughs> show people. And Thank so she you, told Nani. Me, we have it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's called Monica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So she told me about this analogy where you don't light a lamp and put it under the table. You place it on a table for people to see it. So for, um, for other people to get to know about this kind of art, I feel like it should be given more yeah time it should be put out there artists should really believe in themselves and just take the bold step of putting it out there and if you must attach a meaning to it because i know not everyone would understand this as a, piece yeah. yes as mm -hmm. as it is meant to be understood and so um yeah light the lamp place it on the table put your work out there um go the extra mile Jitume. We say Jitume in yeah, yeah, Kenya. Yeah, yeah, Jitume. Yeah, yeah. And yes, and eventually you will meet your people. You will find you the will people who people. appreciate this kind of work. Yeah. Oof, sadly, guys, we, we, we got to end this. <laughs> I, I, I say sadly because I know exactly where it is that I'm coming from. Guess what? Her name is Waridi. I want to talk to her. Talk to us right here on a look up TV, the morning drift. All those questions that you, you, you were sending on Facebook, I'm sorry I didn't get to go there. I'm going to make sure that she has them. We ended. Ian Kesani and I will come shortly and tell you what we have in the act of politics and <laughs> social media as well. Waridi, thank you very much for taking yeah, your time today. You this has me. been lovely. Thank yeah, you. you'll come back again, I'll promise you that. Thank we have you. so much to talk about. Yeah? Okay. All right, all right.